Hi guys and welcome back to Couch Critics. I'm Lamia. This is my friend Ruby. Hi guys. And today we're gonna review French Girl. Yes, French Girl. I watched it in French. Really? And yeah. Apparently in French it's called Chez les beaux parents, which means at the in-laws. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was. I was surprised when it was in French, but it was the only screening last night. But like, was the translation? In French or in like French from France or like Quebecois French? No, Quebecois. And I even really? noticed, yes, I even mm. noticed that um, uh, that Sophie, the girl who plays Sophie, it was the same voice when she was speaking Quebecois and like when it was dubbed. Okay. So I think she did her own She's dubbing. Double, yeah. Because the movie was both in French and English, right? <laughs> Yeah, like, there was moments where they were speaking in French. Mm -hmm. I had to like see the lips, read the lips to make sure that they were yeah. actually speaking in French or it was them. But it was so fun. It was nice to watch a movie that merged both mm -hmm. languages and also watching the translation. At first, I was very disappointed. I was like, oh, no, it's done. <laughs> But then I realized that it was. Did good. you uh, watch it uh, in the Cineplex at Berry? Yes. Okay. Quartier Latin. Yep. Okay. <laughs> cool. Very Frenchy area. Mm -hmm. Not really, actually, but it's a very artistic area. It is. Yeah. I, it, that's my favorite movie theater, but I feel like I never know if the movie's going to be in French or English in that theater. Right? Like, I always expect it to be in French, because supposedly all the movies that are shown there are in French, but, like, most of the time when I go there, it's in English. We watched Vanya there. Yeah. But it was in English. It wasn't... Uh, thank God mm. it wasn't dubbed. I would not have liked it if it was translated. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I also watched Le Consentement there, which was alright already in French, so Me it too. wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. But then uh, this movie was half-half, and they ended up translating all of it. But it was good. It was. Yeah. By the way, disclaimer, we lost our voice this week <laughs> because uh, we went to Olivia Rodrigo's concert and we just screamed so much. So if we have like this raspy voice, it's because yeah. we literally tore our vocal cord. <laughs> But it was so liberating. Oh it, my God. What it a was concert. like a needed exorcism for yes. me. <laughs> Sometimes we need that. <laughs> Maybe we'll insert a clip of us screaming. Oh my god, of us screaming. <laughs> just lower the volume. You know what? We're gonna mute it. We're just gonna yeah. show us screaming. <laughs> But yeah, just go to that show if you ever get a chance to. Yeah, it was hell. It's crazy. Life. Can I tell the small anecdote behind it? Because I was gonna watch mm -hmm. the movie on Wednesday, and then out of the blue like we were able to put our hands on like some last yeah. minute tickets it was very very last minute yeah. very unexpected in the most random way we're not gonna get into details but <laughs> it worked out somehow uh it just worked out and the thing is that ruby didn't want to go to that show and i i just refused to like listen Except. to anything that she had to say <laughs> until like the day of the show and i called and i was like ruby you're going to see olivia tonight <laughs> And I did. And honestly, yeah. I don't regret it at all. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was... But I ended up watching the movie last night because mm -hmm. the, this whole week was very busy. And I think it's the same with you. We've been pretty busy between work yeah. and like, our side projects and everything. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad that I did it because mm -hmm. the movie was filmed in Quebec City. And yeah. funny story, two years ago today, we had our first trip ever to Quebec City together. Yeah. And I think it's during that trip that our friendship just grew more and more. Mm -hmm. And we also mentioned starting a podcast during that trip two during years that ago. Trip. So it was just like a funny coincidence. Was it two years ago or one year ago? No, it was two years ago. It wasn't wow, 2022. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, time flies by so fast. So fast. It was my first time ever in Quebec City. And... But it was so cool because I remember like we went to all the places that are shown in the movie. And yes. we were just like as mesmerized as uh, Gordon, yes. the, the lead in the <laughs> movie. And <laughs> yeah, um... That's nice. And we also were aware that it's a very niche movie. Yeah. But we're going to come up with less niche movies reviews. Yeah. Like starting from next week. Yes. Not next week. The week, well, the week after, maybe. Maybe. Well, so yeah. Sure. Next week we're reviewing music at Rudy Mancuso's movie. And I'm yeah. so excited about it. Me too. Um, we'll Me talk too. about it then. But mm -hmm. just to say we're very excited. But it is a movie where Vanessa Hudgens is um one of the leads and that's the thing it's um uh, we're gonna talk about the synopsis but i just want to do a small comparison with xmas because i feel like it was the same move of hiring vanessa hudgens yeah in a classic kind of rom-com i would say but um 
I think that this movie was better done than the movie Xmas. Like, yes, they chose a very mm-hmm. famous actress to play a very cliche role, but it didn't feel it was very it was kind of a cliche movie, but it still had its touch of, you know, authenticity of like fun and just I don't know. I I, I like the movie. Um, do you, do you wanna do you wanna talk about what that touch of authenticity was like for you? Yes. So so the story is about a girl who wants like who's a chef who's dating a high school uh, teacher and before going on vacation of course she gets her dream job. But what we don't know that the person the girl who was about to give her her dream job or like help her audition for her dream job mm-hmm. was also her ex. And uh, um, that's the whole like thing about the movie. And Gordon, her boyfriend, starts feeling jealous throughout the movie, especially that he finds out that she was her ex from pictures and not from her his girlfriend. So it's a very like it's it's kind of a cliche plot, but for the first time for me at least, I see a movie where the guy is not competing with another guy, but he's competing with a girl. Yeah. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the movie, like her dream job was in Quebec City. So they had to travel to another country with another language. It wasn't New York or California for once. It was Quebec, which I don't know. For me, it's so close to Mm -hmm. my heart because we live in this. We live in Quebec. So that was also nice. And uh, yeah, it's the the in-laws like Sophie's parents were in the movie and he was competing not just for Sophie but also for Sophie's parents and we don't always see that that Mm -hmm. also was another touch and there was two languages in the movie so I think that sums it up it's I haven't seen a movie like this before what about you did you think it was different or did you think it was a cliche I think that if we just like uh uh look up the synopsis we would think that it's a cliche but it definitely has a touch of authenticity and that touch to me it's the fact that they filmed it in Quebec City because if we watch like all like any rom-com it's always about the protagonist who has this big dream of working in New York or like uh, LA even Paris and like when we see cultural shock it's usually a protagonist who goes to France and like they they just have this language barrier and the culture is different or or maybe like Spain and it's it's like something that we see again and again and again and we're kind of like are getting used to but it's the first time that we see someone move to a small like move from a big city to a small city right for their dream and that small city is not that known it's not even montreal it's quebec city which is smaller than montreal and more uh niche yeah (laughs) and so um also the fringlish is very cool and the fact that there was still a cultural shock although like it's north america yeah is very interesting to watch because the fun about this movie and and the comedy in this movie isn't just in the love triangle that um that Gordon, the 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 lead, the guy uh, that was that's played by Zach Baff, I think his his name is that, and uh, Vanessa Hudgens and Evelyn uh, uh, Brochu, the comedy lays also in that family dynamic and also in the cultural cultural shock that's being shown uh, whenever Gordon has to interact with French speaking people that are from Quebec. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it's it, it was it was fun to watch. Like, uh, and also the jokes landed nicely. Most of them, uh, <laughs> I rem- I wasn't paying a lot of attention to the movie honestly because I was trying to get Olivia Rodrigo <laughs> tickets at the same time. And so for me to still understand uh, what the movie was about, regardless regardless of what I was doing, is a proof that the movie was great. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? The, like the authenticity laid on like where was it for you i love the i think it's just like the small like notices like the small things they notice in the movie mm. first of all the Fontenac, we've been there and it's just so pretty. beautiful it's nice to show beautiful things like that but i also really appreciate it one of the sentences that really stuck with me was where um gordon says when he first uh, gets to the house he's like I had such a nice house with nice bricks and everything. They don't do houses like this anymore. Mm-hmm. And for me, I just 
I also saw that and it's nice that people notice it. So even the small things like this is a conversation I would have with my friends every day. So it did like feel very, uh, very uh, authentic. Um, what else? I think uh, I love the part where the food comes uh, towards the end of the movie and it's like mousse mm -hmm. and the parents were surprised and were like, is were this real food? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, that would be my reaction. <laughs> I remember one of the characters was even like washing her hands with the yeah, mouse. Yeah. One of the scenes that stood up to me and that I think was the funniest was during the funeral when Vanessa Hudgens randomly started <laughs> <laughs> singing and she had like this whole uh, song written and ready <laughs> to be sung. <laughs> but she didn't really prepare it well because she yeah. wrote it last night. I love that too, like the <laughs> snooty attitude of Vanessa Hudgens because when I saw Vanessa Hudgens, I was like, oh, they're just going to put like a very famous girl and make her mm -hmm. act modest and all. But they didn't do that. That fits so well for her because she's already a celebrity yeah. in real life and they used that and they played comedy with it. Like mm -hmm. They didn't try to make us think that everything she did was okay. No, they sure. were laughing about it as well. At least Gordon was. And also, like I feel like actors like Vanessa Hudgens, she's a very versatile actor in the sense of like, she could play so many range of characters and she also is a great singer so um i don't know why she's not a bigger star right now like why isn't she in like the a list uh celebrity list but um were you a vanessa hudson fan growing up did you watch high school music you didn't I watch watched, high school music i did oh watch high school God. musical but like my first high school musical that i watched was the last one i watched it at the movie theaters and then i watched the other ones like okay uh, i replayed them i really liked the movies um i know like vanessa hudgens and zach, zach efron were very criticized throughout their career mm -hmm. because and you know being a disney celebrity is not easy because i think when you peak at a young age it's just harder to keep up the pace and sometimes the actors don't really want to keep acting anymore as it's well. It's true. Sometimes because you start acting at a, at such a young age, people only see you as a kid. Like it's harder I to grow start. as a woman in movies as well unless you do a lot of work. It's true but it. we see that also uh, this is a side note. We all we also see that for like actors who were in like long run-in shows yeah. aka gossip girl Grey's yeah. anatomy like let's just say you watch gossip girl right yeah yeah like most of those actors didn't go on to do big things like i ben badgley dan he 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 did like his hit show years after gossip girl yeah. so it it's a uh, I think it like being in a successful show has its pros and cons. Yes, but I don't think like I think it's hard to find a job after being yeah. um, because we get used to them as a certain character, and that's something. Also, side note: we're just <laughs> we're just branching out, but it's a, it's nice to talk yeah. about this. Um, Gloria Pritchett, Sofia Vergara, she played the mm. Gloria Pritchett in Modern yeah. Family for also ten seasons. And uh, she recently had her Netflix show, show Griselda. Mm -hmm. And one of her things that she really, really was working on is to make yeah. sure that her character gets disconnected from Gloria. She even had like some sort of like very specific makeup. It's like she changed the shape of her nose with the makeup specifically for that show so that people don't see her as Gloria Pritchett from Modern Family. And she talked about it in interviews. And uh, I think that's, that's a very big challenge. It's hard to mm -hmm. like dissociate the audience. But uh, last question about yeah. this subject, and then we get back. Um, do you think that if you stayed, uh, for example, if you were in a show that ran for 10 seasons, is it like better to stay in it? Or do you think it's it's better to leave? Because I, like, I don't see the harm in like, being an actor who has an acting job that seems like a nine to five yeah and like for me if you create a character you're committed to that character like you owe it to the to the audience to to, to st stay in the shoes of that character as long as the show is running because i feel like it's selfish to leave and i'm just thinking about so many actors who left and i'm i, I I'm holding a grudge against yeah. them, aka Sandra O oh, uh, and Ellen Pompeo too. Recently, um, yeah. 
but I still love them though. <laughs> I have my arguments and counter arguments for this question because I think that the beauty about being an actor is mm-hmm. being able to play different roles. That's yeah. the reason why I love acting so much because it's nice to have different lives in one lifetime. It's just, it's, it's fun to play with. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, uh, one of my favorite uh, thing, like advice I kind of heard in an acting class is in order to be a good actress, you need to know who you are. And I think that's what makes great actors. It's people who know who they are and how they can showcase it mm-hmm. in different roles. So I think that, yes, it's fun to be cast at different characters, but you can play like, you can have your brand, like we talked about yeah. Ben Mesco, you can have your brand and just play with it in different ways. Mm-hmm. So we can say like acting it could maybe be like you in different multiverses like Mm -hmm. it's the same person but like you're put in these different situations and how would you be so i do understand why actors would want to um, leave leave tv shows and everything but at the same time it's also a family and i think it would be hard to leave a tv show also it's like if you have a successful tv show running for 10 seasons and more it's such a safety to just keep doing that show you're successful people love it already the storyline it's probably great. Some shows like go down after a certain amount of seasons. Some of them stay successful, but either way, you know you have a job at it. It's I think it depends on the care on the person. Like, do you want to take risks, even though it might everything you do after might not be as successful Work. as the show, or do you want to stay in your comfort zone? And yes, acting is not the most comfortable or stable job, but you know if you end up finding stability in these shows and you choose to stay in it. It's not as harmful either, so yeah. It's true. I agree. <laughs> and that's on acting. <laughs> that's on acting. What did you think of the acting in this movie in French Girl? So at first it was very hard for me to judge because it was translated, especially for <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens. I was not used to hearing her speak in French. At first I was like, Oh no, this is gonna be bad because it's trans and I like I couldn't tell how the acting was. But after that I figured out, like, I realized that it was good. Mm. And I was like, if it's good, even when it's translated, then it must be really good. I would watch this movie again just to watch it in its original language. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I think it was good acting. And I think it wasn't too over the top, but it was still, like, you could still tell they were acting, especially with Gordon, because he had (laughs) such a caricatural Mm -hmm. character. Like, you could tell he's acting. I don't see someone acting like that in real life. But that was the fun of it. That was Mm -hmm. the beauty of it. What about you? And who, in your opinion, did the best job at acting in this movie? Uh, I think the most natural acting in this movie to me was Evelyn Brochu. Okay. Um, Sophie. Sophie. Yeah. Uh, she seemed like she wasn't trying hard. And again, like maybe it's because she was she had this duality when it came to English and French, and she could just switch. And to us, it was believable. Whereas for Gordon, he tried a few times to speak in French, but it was kind of weird. But and like his acting was exaggerated, but it was fun because it was supposed to be exaggerated. He 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 had to be the character that was all over uh, the top and who couldn't handle his emotions and everything. Uh, Vanessa Hudgens was my least favorite, I'd say, because uh, c'était très caricatural, well, caricatural. Yeah. And to me, um, she was just the villain, and there weren't that many layers to her character. Like she, like I, okay, she loved Sophie and she wanted her back, but I couldn't see the why to that. And again, like I feel like this, I, I in order to enjoy this movie, you, you need to go into it expecting to be entertained you don't need to have a lot of expectations uh, and yeah and also i totally agree with you mm-hmm. and i uh, i but i don't think that ruby loved sophie i think ruby just wanted to be with someone who made her feel comfortable mm-hmm. and who made her feel superior because i think she had a very big um uh, what is it called like uh, ego ego and power com- like not power complex a superiority complex mm-hmm. she wanted to be around people where she knew that she was gonna be the one who's the most Ooh, impressive yeah anyway sorry i think you were saying something else as well no, no no i totally agree with you i think she definitely wanted sophie to be dependent on her um and and yeah i also something that i know like i would have loved the movie to do is to just get deeper into the culture i don't think there was a mention of any putin in the movie right 
Yeah, and like, although they highlighted a little bit of the cultural shock, I would have loved to see more of it because those characters, they moved to Quebec, like they didn't move to Toronto or Vancouver where like the, their inclusion would have been like easier and like their adaptation would have been smoother. They moved to Quebec and it's like, it's still North America, but it's, it's so different from the rest of Canada and it has so many beautiful um, qualities that could have been highlighted and yeah <laughs> i agree yes mm-hmm. it's just but it's a nice start i think it's i think a nice this start. should be yeah. a start to something even bigger and like to push the movie industry more in it's this true. area and encourage people and to... like a lot of hollywood movies are already being filmed in in montreal and also in quebec and i feel like might as well just create stories that are are being about Quebec. About Quebec yeah. yeah. I think Ryan Reynolds right now is in Montreal to film a new movie and he's he also great. Yeah. And okay. he also started his production company in Canada, not Montreal, okay. but he wants to encourage like uh Canadian movie production. He's Canadian, think, right? Yeah, he okay. is. And I think that's super nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I but I think they also mentioned something that's very like a a problem we have right now that's very big but that nobody talks about as much it's the farmers um farmers like the future of farms because mm-hmm. because of mass production farmers are like slowly losing their farms they're slowly um going into bankrupt city mm-hmm. because the big corporation are like doing mass production and they mentioned that but it wasn't the movie didn't feel like it was fighting for this purpose but having something like a concrete problem happening right now being mentioned that not a lot of people know about i think that was very nice as well Mm -hmm. so uh yeah i think there were a lot of like small gems in the movies i think so too Mm -hmm. a lot of uh tries yeah uh, and they definitely took a few risks and they attempted to do something and it worked and it wasn't great but it's good it's definitely a movie that i would enjoy to watch at home maybe uh, on a day where i'm bored yeah but yeah (laughs) i also love side note and this just like just the mention i love the scenes where uh the swan was running after gordon yeah (laughs) it was repeated many times and i think just the repetition of that scene was also a fun comic Mm -hmm. touch yeah french girl french girl that's our review that's our review Mm. did you have anything to add no, I love the par- the acting of the parents. I think the dad yeah. was very authentic in his role, very believable. Um, I love the grandma scenes with Gordon. <laughs> right. See, that's, that's another thing that I think was very special and different. There was this character that's very yeah. comic, but for once it wasn't the cliche best mm-hmm. friend or something who was just selling random jokes. It was a grandmother. Yeah. I, I, we don't see that that much. It's true. So, yeah. Overall, I think it's a very good movie. Mm -hmm. Um, You guys should go watch it, form your own opinions. Tell us what you think. And yeah, and we'll see you guys next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.